Next up, Greyhound. Okay. The global pandemic has messed up cinema, and I really do miss cinemas. But it's certainly been a boon for the streaming services, and we now have our first Apple TV Plus title in Fudson Film, with the Cupertino giant having paid a hefty $70 million for distribution rights to Sony's Greyhound. Based on a novel by C.S. Forrester, writer of the popular Horatio Hornblower novels, Greyhound is a fiction, but based on enough facts to have a ring of veracity to proceedings. Said proceedings involve the transit of a convoy of mostly US supply ships across the North Atlantic to a needy United Kingdom in the winter of 1942. For a five-day period, the convoy must cross an area known as the Black Pit, a gap beyond the reach of US air cover in the the west or RAF air cover in the east while being hunted by German U-boats. The convoy's protection comes in the form of a British destroyer, a Polish destroyer, a Canadian corvette and the USS Keeling, the greyhound of the title, commanded by Tom Hanks' commander Ernest Krauss, which between them must detect, seek and destroy any German submarines that threaten the other 30-odd ships. And that's it, in a nutshell. Despite involving surface vessels on one side, Greyhound very much has the feel of a submarine film, with the tension, fear and uncertainty typical of that genre though understandably and necessarily without the usual claustrophobia. Its 90-minute running time is compact, economical and reasonably exciting, with some, to repeat the word, tense and well-staged action sequences. If you've played any military video games, you are likely familiar with that little hit of satisfaction-derived dopamine that accompanies sinking a ship or scoring a hit on a target from a gunship. A few scenes in Greyhound, notably one of the nighttime U-boat assaults, manages to achieve precisely the opposite effect as German submarines, despite Krause's best efforts, blow up some members of the convoy, leaving a sinking feeling in the stomach. Where the film is less successful is in its characterisation, because it has none. Tom Hanks is reasonably anonymous in the lead role, his strongest contribution being a sort of calm assuredness, but neither he nor anyone else is given anything more to work with. There's some pleasure to be had in seeing the crew perform competently and intelligently, something that contributes to the satisfaction of watching the Keeling and its sister ships fend off the U-boat threat, but the sailors here are very much subservient to the action, meaning it's, well, largely impossible to feel invested in the fate of any given character. One question remains to me though, and it's why the screenplay, written by Hanks, uses the conceit of the U-boat commanders breaking in on the Allied radio frequencies to in the parlance of our times, them right up. Something that lacks historical veracity and indeed reads that way in the film. The extras on Apple TV Plus show some of the efforts the production went to to ensure a ring of truthiness, including restoring the World War II era guns aboard the USS Kidd so that the firing rate and movement would be accurate, with only muzzle flashes and smoke added in post-production. It's strange then to undermine that work with something that is, in fact, treated as no biggie anyway in the film. It's not the classic of its genre, but Greyhound is a pretty solid Sunday afternoon movie that doesn't outstay its welcome. And if you have access to Apple TV+, Plus, you could do worse than check it out. Did you watch this, Scott? I'm afraid I did not, no. no. Uh, I did I did watch it. I, I, um, uh, I feel this is a really big missed opportunity. I thought it was pretty bland. I think the... The lack of interest in characteriz- characterization is genuinely surprising coming from the pen of an actor who himself has managed to... I mean, he's not my favourite actor, but I know he's, he's um, a lot of people's favourites and even I acknowledge his work in bringing character to roles which at times have been underwritten. Hanks is an actor who seems to understand the importance of character and nuance and so I was really surprised at a script from him I think his first Hollywood script, I'm correct in saying, lacked any real um, insight into anyone part of the crew, uh, you know, all- allied or or German. I also found, I I don't know, I, I disagree with you, I suppose, Drew, on the, the set piece stuff that I just found it quite boring. It was just all kind of, it really was, when you allude to video games, certainly I agree with you in that part. It just did seem very sort of uninspired, sort of keep your finger on the trigger cannons blasting away until someone finally hits a U-boat and everyone cheers and goes, yay, that problem's gone away for now. Um, I felt really detached from the action in this for the most part. And it's genuinely a shame because I think... There is enough historical uh, 
documentation that could have been drawn on. Um, I know that based on real events, which is to say that yes, in in the mid forties there was an awful lot of stuff happening in the North Atlantic with German U boats chasing ships. That's about as far as historical involvement is concerned with this. It's not based on any act, one actual event. It's, I guess, just a hodgepodge, um, an amalgamation of any number of conflicts that took place in the North Atlantic. But there is a real sense for me that this could have been something quite special. I think there's a great deal of tension that could have been derived from the crew's lack of trust in Hanks's character. It's his first commission, and he is, obviously, it's his first experience of this, and he is incredibly nervous and unsure of how to deal with the situation. And it's hinted at that his crew at points perhaps are a little bit dubious about his performance, but it's never really played through to any sort of uh, dramatic impetus. Despite the fact that we keep getting told he's nervous and his crew don't trust him he seems to make all the right decisions uh, with the exception of perhaps going a little bit overboard on his use of depth charges initially which which leaves him a little bit short at a crucial point in the film apart from that I don't see that he's made any terribly bad decisions uh, and he is you know hailed he's hailed as a hero by the end of the film by the sort of the remaining the surviving the surviving crew of the, of the ships accompanying the Greyhound, he gets a lovely sort of emotional payoff at the end, but it doesn't feel particularly earned, I don't think. I also think that on top of that tension between Hanks and the crew that is never really built upon, um, there's a wonderful film to be made about these cunning German U-boats stalking these ships. The tension there could have been absolutely insane. And the sort of the cutting in and the radio chatter and the taunting and stuff is not only massively inaccurate, but it, it would have been the end of the U-boats because it would have it would have allowed the American ships to quite accurately pinpoint where they were. Exactly. Uh, yeah. so, um, I don't understand why that's in there. It's, well, it adds nothing, and especially because they do just like shrug off. It's like, oh, we'll yeah. just change the radio channel then. I'm not so bothered about the inaccuracy of that if it had been used to any sort of dramatic effect, because there is a terrifying scenario that would play out in the dark in the middle of the Atlantic between these boats and. Um, the the German uh, submarines hunting them. There is an absolutely nail-biting experience that I feel could have been wrought out of this script with just a few sort of changes and commitments um, in areas where kind of scant regard is paid. And I just think overall it's a hugely missed opportunity. I think it is really solid. Again, it's got the good grace to get his business over and done within 90 minutes. Um, but both both my wife and I uh, watched it, felt a little bit disappointed. And she's, she's a huge Hanks fan. And she fed into what you'd said, Drew, that really it's quite an anonymous performance from, from Hanks. Yeah. It's a very by-the-numbers Hanks performance. It very Can much... Anybody? Yeah, absolutely. And it kind of feels like it's like, okay, we know that this character's very two-dimensional. What's the absolute most we could get out of it well Tom Hanks would be good in that role um, it really does it's it's not a it feels like Hanks uh, painting Hanks by numbers um, as opposed to any sort of signature role on his part so I yeah I was kind of disappointed all round by this film I feel like just a few changes this could have been something really quite special I absolutely don't disagree with you pretty much anything Craig I, mean, I think we're largely on board there with like the mm. characterization stuff. I enjoyed the action mm. I found the action entertaining mm. that was um, so that was enough for me to to give a reasonable recommendation as well. I enjoyed it, but you're absolutely right. There's absolutely a missed opportunity um, because yeah, this car doesn't nobody, and there are hints that the crew are. I don't. I don't think they would mutiny. No, but that there would be more hesitation certainly. In there. there are hints that like they're not so sure about why he's turned in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. and you see afterwards why. But it's like. A kind of a hesitation on his exo's face at one point or something, and then yeah, that was about it. Hmm. Uh, if they'd played with that a bit more, it'd been more interesting. And the other thing in particular, there's the one bit where I was really, really disappointed was there's a scene where in the middle of a U boat fight at night, a ship is blown up, hmm. and the choice is hmm. go and try and save another ship or save the men that are right next to him. Yeah. That really needed to be explored more because that's a hell of a difficult decision to make. Yeah, absolutely. And but because there are no characters, nobody can have a conversation in it, which is no. disappointing. Uh, so yeah, the, the, it's frustrating in that way because there the, there could be something quite quite special in there. Absolutely, mm. um, if you add the solid action with actual characterization, mm. and it's weird to me think about because what I thought about a few times to this film was Captain Phillips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It was like yet another thing where Tom Hanks is the captain of a boat, kind of out of his element, first combat. It's not directly comparable, of course, but and it's like night and day the difference between the Hanks performances and that. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well what what's really annoying is that the film alludes, uh, the film acknowledges the importance of character because there's a point at which um, Greyhound is itself attacked, and I think there are uh, three. Uh, fatalities, a number of casualties and three fatalities and we find out who one of the fatalities is and it's really played uh, very mournfully um, and we are given the impression that we should feel really bad and understand why the captain feels terrible about that particular person having died and had anything whatsoever been invested in that character uh, beyond a sort of a cursory couple of lines of dialogue between him and the captain early in the movie, then I might I might feel compelled to uh, I might feel compelled to agree. However, as it stands, that scene just plays out as though sorry did I did I miss some really key stuff? I had to ask my wife who it was they were talking about. Yes, Craig, thank you because I watched that. I was like, you like, like, who who the heck's this guy who's Cleveland? Like who? Yeah. Who? What? I was like. Oh, it's the guy who was determined he would have a sandwich. Okay. Like, it took me ages to realise that that's who they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get it at all. Uh, my wife had to explain it to me. So, yeah, not clear at all. And then played played very mournfully as though we should all feel gratefully impacted by this character's passing when in, when in actuality we didn't even know who he was. Yeah, really weird. Really weird and a big, big missed opportunity. But not without merit. Not without merit, and not the worst film that we've spoken about so far, let alone in the episode. But uh, yeah, I would like to have seen it done with just a little bit more depth. 